Usually like 80% of my wardrobe is black, but today I felt very pink. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, so this channel is all about luxury designer handbags and I'm slowly going to introduce my entire handbag collection to you and talk about my favorites. I'm going to talk about bags I've sold and why and which items I've actually repurchased and so on and so on. <laughs> so today we talk about this beautiful seasonal Chanel classic flat bag. It is my inofficial favorite. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but this one is my favorite. <laughs> so um, this one I got last summer and I was actually pretty late to the game. Um, I saw this many, many months beforehand and um, I saw it in Harrods. I walked past it and I was blown away immediately. It was love at first sight, um, but I didn't get it there and then because I do think about my purchases um, and I let it brew for a couple of weeks, months sometimes, um, to actually think, okay, you know, is that feeling still there? Do I still really want to get that bag? Um, or is it just, you know, do I forget about the bag? And then I know, okay, it's not one for me. It's not one for my core collection. <laughs> um, but this one was, I couldn't stop thinking about it, but it was actually months from the time that I first saw it at Harrods. And once I actually bought it, months and months later. So this is 26 series collection. Um, I think I got it while we were almost approaching 28, the 28 series. So there were a couple of months, like many months <laughs> in between. Um, so I, one day I watched like HRH collection, she's a very big famous YouTuber here, um, who has a great handbag collection as well. And she has this bag. And I thought, okay, this is the sign. I don't need another one. <laughs> and I um, decided to go on the hunt and I went to a couple of different shops here in London and I was looking for this one and I actually was able to still find this beauty in the Bond Street store. They had another one in Selfridges, but that one was on display um, for many, many months and then they had to removed it. So they had it back in the back of their store and it didn't look good. It looked... Yeah, like a used bag. <laughs> so I was sure not to get that one. And then luckily um, she saw in the system that there was one in Bond Street. So I was running there and I actually got this and it is perfect. Um, so yeah, when I got this, I was really worried. I was really nervous. I mean, obviously this is pink satin, baby pink satin. Um, I've never had a satin bag from Chanel. I have leather bags. I had a tweed bag once that didn't work out for me at all. Um, the pilling was just too much, you know, where it was rubbing against your body while you were walking with the bag. And so I was really careful um, about getting another fabric bag because I told myself nine after the tweed, I told myself no, only um, Chanel leather, uh, no fabrics, no tweed, nothing. But yeah, this one stole my heart. <laughs> Um, it still has a very, very special place in my heart, and I got this one. So, um, I thought in the beginning that I'm gonna have the new back disease that a lot of people complain about. If you're a handbag collector, you probably do know what I talk about. Um, if you get a new bag, you're all excited and you want to carry it and you want to wear it and be seen with it, but the one thing that stops you is, you know, worries building up in your head. What if I do that? What if this happens to the bag? I mean, those are very expensive bags. I take very good care of my bag. Um, it is very important to me. I do baby them. Um, I want them to keep their shape. I do want them to stay perfect in case I would ever resell a certain bag. I mean, I, this belongs to my core collection. I'm never going to resell this. But nevertheless, I want them to be perfect for many, many years to come. So um, yeah, I got this one and I thought, oh God, it's probably the same story like with my boy from Chanel. Um, that one was sitting in, you know, in my cabinet on my shelf for probably two to three years before I finally made the decision to wear it um, because I was so scared of actually scratching the lambskin. Um, but with this one, I got it and I was wearing it immediately and I wore it all over last summer. Um, so, so, so many times, just because it gave me so much joy just carrying that bag. And so it wore beautifully. Nothing has happened to it. The satin 
The satin is still absolutely beautiful. No snagging, nothing. The satin hasn't snapped. It is absolutely beautiful. So there's no pocket at the back of this bag. I think that's what um, differentiates it from regular, you know, from your regular Chanel classic um, flap handbag. <laughs> um, but this doesn't really bother me. So it is a very, very, very beautiful bag. Um, it is very special. It has brushed gold, aged gold hardware. Same with the strap. Um, it's the same brushed gold hardware and I think it just goes really well together. Most of my wardrobe is actually black. 80% of my wardrobe is black, but today I felt very pink. <laughs> um, just for the occasion of showing you guys this beautiful bag. So um, if you open it up, mine is actually stuffed right now, but let me take this out quickly. Okay, so this bag does not hold the shape on its own. As you can see, if I close it back up, whoop, it is very squishy. If you stuff it with your wallet and everything that you carry with you, of course you're going to be fine. Um, but on its own, it's a very squishy bag. So that's why I always keep my bag stuffed. Um, if you open this one up, it has a beautiful leather lining inside and also the strap whoop, the strap is also a leather so these are the only leather parts when it comes to the bag inside you have one big compartment you have a little slip pocket and also a zipper pocket at the back it is pretty spacious you can fit everything you need inside um, this is the advantage of having just a single flap bag um, your regular Chanel classic flaps nowadays of course come with a double flap so you open it up and you have a second flap inside that you open up as well um, but yeah this one just has a single flap okay so um, would I recommend seasonal pieces from Chanel yes of course first of all if you know you find a bag that you really really love and it makes your heart sing how Ming's from Ming's for All always says it um, if it does make your heart sing, go get the bag. Um, also, if we talk about investment purposes, if you get a seasonal piece from Chanel that is actually in the shape of a classic, then of course those pieces, if we talk about years and years down the line, those pieces would probably hold their value better um, than a shape that is here for one season and then it's going to be gone forever. <laughs> so... Um, Definitely, you know, if you want a seasonal classic flap, think about it. Think about how long you want to keep the bag. Is it a bag for your core collection? Is it one that you see yourself carrying when you're 80? <laughs> um, or do you think you're going to be reselling it a couple of years down the line, a couple of months down the line? Um, those seasonal pieces, especially those made in fabric, they are, of course, a lot cheaper than your regular leather version of a classic flap. Um, but yeah, of course, that reflects the resale value as well. But I mean, you spend less, you might get less. Um, or you have a very special piece that everybody wants, and then the price, of course, like shoot through the roof. So in terms of wear and tear, this beauty is still absolutely perfect. Like I said, I was wearing it quite a lot. Um, nothing has happened to it except for one thing. You have to know I am a bubble tea addict. <laughs> what coffee is for other people, bubble tea is for me. I drink one every single day, especially during summer because it's refreshing and I need my sugar hit <laughs> to have enough energy to get through the day. So I must have put my bubble tea cup somewhere on the surface and then I put the bag actually where the cup was standing before. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But there is like a circle here. Um, I don't know if it shows or if it doesn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, bubble teas are very sugary. So um, I have like a little circle down there. But that's fine. That's my own fault. Other than that, the material holds up pretty well. There is no color transfer and nothing. The bag is absolutely perfect. And I am very happy with this definitely my unofficial favorite <laughs> yeah okay and in terms of modeling shots 
this is how the bag looks like when you wear it on your shoulder. It sits really nicely, it's very comfortable, you can just rest your arm on it. Um, what you could also do, of course you could just wear it on the crook of your arm, but it's a little bit long and wear a crossbody. I have never worn this bag like this, I just prefer the double strap, um, but you could definitely wear it as a crossbody bag. Um, the strap drop is pretty low, as you can see I'm 5'7", 5'8", so for anybody who's smaller it might sit pretty low if you wear it like this. Um, I've currently got 22 designer handbags in my collection, but this one, this one is number one. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm gonna slowly introduce the other bags in my collection to you. I'm gonna do review videos, wear and tear videos, um, what fits inside my bag, etc, etc. Um, and yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and support me and subscribe. And you're gonna be seeing more of my bags very soon. <laughs> okay guys, thank you for watching and I see you soon. Bye!